So today I'm going to be talking about what you can expect your freshman year as a CS major. So probably the most asked question, maybe like the most Google search question about being a computer science major is, do you need to know how to code before you go into college? And the answer to that question is no. I would say that honestly, the majority of people who are coming into college as a computer science major don't really have coding experience. You will be surrounded by some people who have been coding for like, I don't know, since they were like, 12 or whatever and you know those people they do their own thing but if you're coming into college with no coding experience and you want to be a computer science major that is 1000% okay don't worry about it at all you will learn everything you need to know when you are in college if you are actually worried about maybe whether or not computer science is for you then i would recommend just taking a couple courses online there are tons of free courses that you can take to help alleviate this stress if you're really worried about coding but you really you don't even have to write a line of code to be a computer science major you'll you will be fine so next i want to talk about what you're going to learn so i always say this in my videos where i'm like when you're a computer science major you're really learning how to problem solve and not necessarily learning how to code but this is the exception. I would say that your first year you are actually learning how to code just because you do need those foundational concepts to be able to go on in your courses. So you are going to spend time learning about the syntax of whatever language your college course offers. So I graduated from Georgia Tech and our intro course taught us in Python. And then there was another course that also taught us in Java. Uh, so I feel like those are probably two of the most popular languages that a lot of universities choose to start students off with. And then I've also heard of some people starting off learning with C++ or C Sharp, which are a little more difficult, but typically it's going to be one of those uh, couple of languages that you're going to start off learning. So along with learning syntax of whatever language that you're going to be learning, you'll also learn how to run and compile your code. You'll also be learning debugging. Um, you'll learn data structures and algorithms, conditionals, which is just basically like uh, for loops and while loops, if you've ever heard that, or if then statements. And if you haven't heard of any of this stuff, that's completely okay. Don't be overwhelmed you're going to learn it in this intro course. So next I wanna talk about what your first intro course could kind of be like. So like I said, I graduated from Georgia Tech, so a lot of my experience is just gonna be from well, my only experience is from my perspective. So keep in mind that whatever college you go to will probably be different. But at Georgia Tech, uh, the intro course is called CS1301 and it had homework due every single week. So we had coding homework and then along with that, we had three written tests. And then I think we had like one project that we had to do in these intro CS courses. I didn't really have too many projects. It was mainly just having homework due every single week and then three tests spaced out throughout the semester and then maybe one project. Uh, but as you do advance in your courses, you probably will be doing more projects and less tests. If you are really nervous about what your first intro CS class will be like, Pretty much every college's syllabus is online, <laughs> from what I can tell at least. So just look up whatever the name is of your intro course, put in syllabus, and you'll be able to see what you're gonna be learning. And hopefully that can help alleviate some of the stress that you're feeling if you're worried about what your intro course will be like. And then along with that, um, if you do come in with coding experience, you'll probably either start off taking data structures and algorithms, or you might start off at that like second tier computer science class. But those are probably most likely all of the CS classes you will touch. But in one of my other videos, which I've made a couple of CS videos, <laughs> and I'll have them all linked down below. I mentioned that CS is a lot of math. So you'll probably be taking at least one math course per semester. If you haven't taken Calc 1, Calc 2, or Calc 3, you'll probably have to take all of those. And then you'll also have to take linear algebra. And lastly, in terms of math, you also have to take discrete math. So you may not take all these courses your freshman year, but these are just some of the courses that you may take depending on how much experience or how many like AP credits or IB credits, whatever you come in with to your college. So I want to talk about a couple of laptops I recommend. So this isn't an extensive list, but if you guys want me to do an extensive list for best laptops for freshman computer science majors or best budget laptops for freshman computer science majors, or just in general, <laughs> let me know. Um, but I only have three recommendations and that's mainly because I really have been a heavy Mac user all my life. So you can guess uh, my first recommendation is the m1 macbook pro i used the macbook pro to code in college and it worked perfectly fine um, it would have moments when it would like overheat but i max overheat a lot but with the new m1 chip it's honestly fine and in the past i wouldn't have said this but i actually also recommend the m1 macbook air just because of that m1 chip the next laptop i want to recommend is the microsoft surface book 3 or the microsoft surface laptop 4 so once again this 
these are items that I have. Um, I have the Surface Laptop 3 and I think it's an excellent computer. I don't have the Surface Book, but it is a little like tier above. And honestly, it can be useful because it has a detachable uh, keyboard. So you can use it to take notes and then you can just, you know, attach it again and type your notes or whatever you need to do. So I think that's probably like the main benefit of having the Surface Book. And then the last laptop I wanna recommend is the Lenovo ThinkPad T14. So I don't know anything about Lenovo laptops. So this is kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of just tossing out an idea here, but I saw a ton of people in college with Lenovo's and with N Lenovo ThinkPads. Do I know which models they had? No, but I did look up on Google and Reddit to see what people recommended. And a lot of them were saying the T14 was a pretty good laptop. So I think it's around the same price as uh, the MacBooks and the Surface, um, the Surface Book. So if you, you know, you're not feeling Microsoft, you're not feeling Mac, then look into getting the Lenovo. So if all those laptops are either out of price range or you're just not interested in them, then I would make sure to have at least eight gigabytes of RAM. 16 is recommended, but you can get away with eight gigabytes of RAM as well as your CPU. You want it to either be an Intel i5 or an Intel i7 or an AMD. And then um, of course, if you're going Mac M1, if you are interested in getting any of the MacBook Pros or Airs, I think Apple is running their Apple education pricing right now, either that or it's gonna start in August. But typically what their little deal is, is that they'll knock off like I think 100 to $200 and then you get a free pair of AirPods with them. So if you haven't bought a laptop yet and you're interested in buying a MacBook, wait for that Apple education pricing to come out so you can get a free pair of AirPods and some money knocked off. So I just wanted to end with a bunch of rapid fire tips for, you know, just basic things for freshman computer science majors. And the first one is to start your homework early. So you do not want to be that person who is trying to go out on Friday night, but your homework is due at 11.59 p.m. and you just started at 11.30 p.m. Don't be that person. Start your homework early. Look at it, you know, kind of think about it a little bit and then, you know, work on it throughout the week. If you finish it in one day, great, good for you. But with computer science, it's kind of hard to gauge how quickly you'll solve a problem, but you really never know when you're actually going to finish your homework. So just make sure to start it early. On the subject of homework, I would also say try doing your homework and solving the problem in pseudocode first. This is just gonna make it a lot easier for you, especially when you're learning the syntax of a new language. You don't have to do it on paper, but I would say that solving it and writing it down in pseudocode is really helpful and it'll also prepare you for my next tip. So my next tip is still writing down on paper. This is like a two part tip, but basically this is gonna be a skill that you're going to need to have firstly for coding interviews and then secondly for your test. So. All my tests were handwritten, like you had to handwrite code. And of course you don't have anything to check whether your syntax is correct. So you have to make sure that your syntax is pretty much perfect. Um, they would always dock points if you miss things here and there. So I would really recommend just, you know, writing down your code because that way you're gonna be able to learn the syntax a lot better. I feel like I've said syntax like 50 times, <laughs> but you're gonna be able to learn the language a lot better. And you're just gonna be able to understand the problem more if you write it down. The next tip is something that is a little tricky. So with college, of course, you're gonna have friends in your classes, you're gonna have new people everywhere, and y'all are gonna wanna work together, you know, as you should, because college is a collaborated place. But with computer science, CS courses, it's a little tricky because you do not wanna get an honor code violation. So what I mean by that is that for pretty, I'm pretty sure for like all my courses, um, they had some sort of like test it wasn't a test program. It was something that basically it could, they ran your code against to make sure it was not copied from anyone or anything. So if you are working together, just be cautious to really, you know, give out ideas and whatnot. You know, don't use the same variables. I'm not, don't, basically don't cheat is what I'm trying to say. But with CS courses, it's really hard not to have similar homework to someone if you're working together. So I would just say, you know, Use your judgment and be just be cautious of it. So my next tip is that if you don't understand something, watch videos on it. So that was my first point of attack, uh, you know, after I like abused Stack Overflow. But if I really didn't understand a concept, I would watch a video on it. If I feel like my professor didn't explain it well, videos were so much helpful than reading the online textbook. If you are really stuck, especially like on your homework or on a project, then I would recommend going to your TA's office hours. I remember my first year, if I was stuck on homework, I would actually go to office hours like 
pretty much every single time I was stuck. And then as I went up in my years, I started going less and less, even if I was confused, <laughs> just because I honestly, I had negative experiences with TAs and don't, if a TA is rude to you, like just dismiss it. You, you need their help. So not saying that they should be rude to you, but don't stop going to office hours if you feel dumb per se. So there's really no shame in going to office hours. It's only gonna help you in the long run. And if you do have any negative experiences with rude TAs, just brush them off. It can ruin your day for like a second and then honestly get over it. Don't be like me who never goes to off, who never went to office hours again because I had a rude TA. It doesn't matter and it's not that deep. And then finally, if you are really stuck on a problem or you're struggling in the class, you're, con you're stressed, you're confused, set up some time with the professor, go to the professor's office hours. Professors have office hours, honestly, to answer questions. And I was gonna say help you, but I'm not really sure if that's the right word either, but professors are there. So be sure to use them as a resource if you really feel like you are struggling in the course. So that's gonna be it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure to give it a like and also subscribe to my channel if you are new. Also leave me a comment down below if you are a computer science major or you're about to be a freshman computer science major and if this video helped um, let me know what other CS videos you want me to make because I can make them <laughs> and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye guys!